This isn't just a rivalry, it's a battle over the future of artificial intelligence. Huawei versus Nvidia, a showdown built on ambition, restriction, and a fight for technological survival. All right, let's get right into it. We're talking about one of the biggest showdowns in tech today, Huawei versus Nvidia. This is a battle for nothing less than the future of artificial intelligence. And it's not just about who's got the fastest chip. No, this is a story about ambition, about being cut off, and about fighting for technological survival. You know, when you see a headline, ask if a company's strategy is brave or foolhardy, you know you're in for a story. It really gets to the core of what's happening here. Is Huawei's move a stroke of absolute genius, or is it a massive, reckless gamble? So for the better part of two decades, you have to understand NVIDIA has been the undisputed king of AI. Their technology became the very foundation of the AI revolution. I mean, they were the essential hardware powering pretty much everything, from research labs to the world's most powerful data centers. And here's the massive problem for Huawei. Severe U.S. sanctions basically cut them off at the knees. They were blocked from the tools, the tech, and the markets they needed to even stand in the ring. It was a move designed to completely cripple their AI ambitions. But here is the wild and probably unintended twist. By trying to lock Huawei out, the sanctions basically gave them no other choice. They had to build their own totally independent AI ecosystem from scratch. It was an act of creation born out of pure restriction. So to really get the scale of what Huawei is up against, first we have to appreciate just how dominant NVIDIA's kingdom really is. And trust me, it's a fortress. You see, NVIDIA's real power isn't just its hardware, it's this, CUDA. The best way to think about CUDA is like the Windows or Mac OS for AI. It's the software the developers have used for almost 20 years to build everything. And here's the kicker, it only works on NVIDIA chips. This quote just nails it, right? A moat or a swamp. It was a brilliant strategic move because it created this massive wall around their kingdom. If you're a developer, switching away from NVIDIA isn't as simple as buying a new graphics card. It means leaving behind this entire mature ecosystem you've built your whole career on. And what's the result of that moat? This. At its peak, NVIDIA controlled somewhere between 80 and 95% of the global market for these AI chips. That's not market leadership, folks. That is a straight-up monopoly. Okay, so you're Huawei. You're facing this absolute giant. How do you even start to fight back? Well, you go right for the hardware. You launch a direct assault. Let's break down this head-to-head. -head. You've got NVIDIA's A100. It was the global standard, but now it's heavily restricted in China. And then you've got Huawei's Ascend 910B. Now, two things here are absolutely key, performance and availability. Not only is it available, but some tests show it delivering anywhere from 80% to even 120% of the A100's power. Suddenly, for Chinese companies, this wasn't just an alternative, it was the only high-performance alternative they could actually buy. And this isn't some short-term reaction. Look at this. Huawei has laid out a super ambitious roadmap all the way out to 2028. They're signaling to the entire market, we are in this for the long haul. And see that little detail for late 2026? They're even developing their own high bandwidth memory, another critical piece of tech they were cut off from. This is all about achieving total independence. But like we said, hardware is only half the battle. To really compete, you have to take on the beast. You have to take on CUDA. And Huawei's plan for this is, well, it's incredibly daring. I mean, really think about that for a second. How do you fight something that's been the industry standard for two decades? How do you convince an entire generation of developers to abandon the one tool they've ever known? It seems impossible. Huawei's answer is basically, if you can't beat them at their own game, you change the rules of the game entirely. Instead of building another closed off fortress like CUDA, they did the opposite. They made their alternative called CAN open source. The strategy is to build a massive collaborative community to go around the monopoly's walls, not try to break through them. Now let's be real, this is a massive uphill battle. CUDA is the new kid on the block. It doesn't have two decades of polish. Developers have raised concerns about it being complex and maybe not as stable. And the support community is just a fraction of the size of CUDA's. Overcoming all that is a monumental task. So with all these challenges and being under crippling sanctions, how in the world is Huawei actually pulling any of this off? 
Well, this is where it gets really clever. We're talking about some serious innovation and you could almost call it technological guerrilla warfare. Let's start with intellectual property. In just one year, 2023, Huawei filed this many patents related to GPUs, 3,091. Now that number might not mean much on its own. So how about this? That is five times more than Nvidia filed in the exact same year, five times. This is an incredibly aggressive play to build a patent wall around their technology. But all the patents in the world don't matter if you can't actually make the chips. And this is the biggest wall they've hit. To make the most advanced chips, you need these incredible machines called EUV lithography machines, and sanctions have completely blocked China from buying them. It's like trying to build a modern skyscraper with tools from the 1980s. So what do they do? They get incredibly creative with the older DUV tools they're allowed to have. Here's the basic idea. They start with those older machines. Then, using a super complex technique called multi-patterning, they basically print the circuits over and over again on top of each other with insane precision. They combine that with their own patents, and the final result is a chip that can achieve performance in the same class as a two nanometer chip, all without ever touching the forbidden EUV machine. It's a mind-bogglingly clever workaround. So you add all this up, the hardware push, the open source software gambit, these crazy manufacturing hacks, what's the end result in the real world? Well, we are watching the great tech divide happen in real time. Take a look at China's AI chip market right now in 2024. It's unbelievable. It's a dead heat. Huawei has already caught up to Nvidia on its home turf. Both are sitting at around 39% of the market. The homegrown alternative isn't a dream anymore, it's here. Now this is where it gets really wild. Look at the forecast for just two years from now. It's a complete earthquake. Projections show Huawei grabbing a dominant 50% of the market, while Nvidia's share is expected to collapse to just 8%. Think about that. The very sanctions designed to stop Huawei have essentially created a protected market that has launched it into domestic dominance. And this all leaves us with the biggest question of all, the one that affects everyone. We are barreling towards a future with two separate, parallel, and likely incompatible AI ecosystems. So will this rivalry, this forced competition, actually spark a new wave of faster innovation for everybody? Or are we just building a new kind of digital wall that's going to fragment the future of technology for decades to come? So we are left at a crossroads. One road leads to fractured, parallel worlds of intelligence. The other, to an innovation race that could redefine our future. The showdown isn't just about who builds the better chip. It's about who builds the next reality.